second derivative. So if you just apply the derivative rules as you have practiced many times, you would get two points. So this equation right here doesn't even have to be simplified. That's two whole points. Then you say, okay, wait a minute, dy dx is this thing right here. If I put in that, I get a third point, and now i got to do is plug in all the numbers to get the fourth point. You do not have to work anything out. You oh. can leave it like the green box. That's hard to grade. It is hard to grade. So I look for things that are wrong versus right, then it grades faster. So. One half? Oh my god. So if they got the whole thing right, would they have gotten the first two points as well? So if they really have the green box perfectly, uh, I would feel very safe in saying they got all four. Really? Like I don't see how in the world you would have that green box written down and not know how to do the stuff above it. So I tend to always do that. When I start at the end and work backwards when I grade, it's faster. I'll put a new folder. This guy was pretty close. If you knew the yellow package, yeah, they call it implicit Cori. Whenever you have a formula that has an x and a y all mixed in together, yeah, and you do dx to both halves, they call it implicit difference. I don't emphasize that because what do I care? It's the same process. Please. Um, they plug in the like the yeah, go see the thing. What I would do, Lexi, is I would look to the end, see if they have this. If they have this, and they have work showing that it seems logical, pretty sure it's four out of four. Like, the only way to get one over 32 is either cheat or do it right. This guy needs to learn how to put his. his Oh my gosh, it's four points.